Field research is a great opportunity to test concepts that have been learned in the classroom. For three bioresource engineering students who traveled to Benin, Africa, their field research project was also an opportunity to test what they've learned about life. Rice. It's the staple of life for millions of people worldwide. Here in the village of Gobe in Benin, West Africa, the women work long, hard hours to make the most of their crop. But at least half of the rice they grow winds up wasted, never consumed. In Benin, as an example, they would import more than uh, three times what they produce. Michael Ngadi is a professor of food process engineering at McGill University. A native of Nigeria, Ngadi and colleagues in the Department of Bioresource Engineering are addressing the problems of food security in Africa by tackling post-harvest loss. We examine that there is not proper drying techniques, there is no proper storage technique, there is no proper milling technique, there is no proper uh, paraboiling technique. So everything is done in a small scale. So if we can reduce the post-harvest loss and then improve the quality of rice that eventually gets to the farm and to the market, then, then that would invigorate the local production and, and improve the situation over the underground. Over the summer months, three bioresource engineering students from McGill set out on a fact-finding mission to Benin. What were current rice processing practices and what could be done to improve them at the village level? I was actually very fortunate that we had three female students because we were working on rice and most of the rice processing is done by women. And it, it's still quite gender differentiated in that society. Robert Koch, emeritus professor of engineering, accompanied the students to Africa. Their job would be to assess the efficiency of the clay stoves and metal inserts used to parboil rice and to work with the village women to understand the challenges they face and come up with solutions. And seeing that we were girls, women, coming to them, talk to women, uh, they, would, they saw it a lot better than if it was only men that came to talk to them. Uh, Undergraduate students Stéphanie Dumais, along with Audrey Yank and Stéphanie Maillet, determined that more than 50% of the energy created by the burning wood was actually being wasted. This is um, the traditional stove that the women are using in the village in the West Africa mainly. So what they're doing, they're putting a fire underneath and they're simply putting the cauldron on top. So as you can see, there's a lot of heat dissipation due to the wind. The smoke coming from the traditional stoves also poses a health risk to the village women. So the students began designing a more efficient stove, one that would also channel the smoke better. Like that was the earth first model that we built over there. Since we just tried to block uh, the wind, so reduce the heat dissipation. And uh, after that we went with a little bit more sophisticated design, which is this yeah, one. This one. So with this one, what's good about it is that the cauldron sits inside inside the, the stove and you have walls coming up. The students use materials that the villagers can easily find, like clay. But they also wanted to test the advantages that a slightly greater investment could bring. So by um, putting a chimney, we want to see how we could increase the efficiency of the stove and to try to reduce uh, the health problem due to the smoke by only having a small pieces of, of metal that would just increase the cost just a little bit. They really learned to think about what heat transfer and energy, what it really means uh, in, you know, sort of as it happens in the field. And they learned to deal with the frustrations that can come when working in the field. The tools that don't always work, the electricity would go off, the water would go off, the transportation wouldn't show up, but still you have to keep going and so you have to learn how to cope with that and, and keep a really good sense of humor. <laughs> That's the most important. Another challenge facing the villagers is fuel. Wood is scarce and deforestation is a growing problem. The women, responsible for collecting the wood, must go ever deeper into the forest to find it. 
The students decided to use the wasted plant material from the rice husks to make fuel briquettes for the fire. They used their engineering skills to design a press. The students wanted a machine that required only human power, something the villagers have in ample supply. They then made a mash consisting of chopped rice husks mixed with a binding agent, like water. The students experimented with ingredients and shapes to finally come up with a fuel puck, which held together better than briquettes. And after one or two times that we showed them, they took over everything. They didn't want us to touch the press anymore and they wanted to do it by themselves. And they did it really well. It was working, it was efficient. Uh, Ladies were really happy with the product and their reaction was uh, maybe we could sell that as well. So that could be an extra income. We were sort of hoping to stimulate the women, especially the women in the villages, to set up uh, more commercial co-ops so they can earn cash. Because right now, uh, the women there do a lot of work, but they are not involved in the cash economy. So the, the objective is to actually get them more involved in the cash economy. This field research program was a first step. The goal is to refine the designs and technologies in order to expand the program with the assistance of NGOs and local universities. And I just got some emails that these are being tested in the villages and that the villagers, uh, the women are very happy and very satisfied with that and that they can actually think of some of the, some of the ways that they can extend these technologies and that's wonderful. For the students, this field research project was more than a lesson in applied engineering. It was an unforgettable lesson in living. Family is so important in Africa close relation between people, exchanging with everyone. Uh, the relationship is so warm. I really felt welcome. Even if it was my first time, I didn't know the culture at all, I learned it really fast because they want to tell you about them. They want to tell you about their culture, what makes them different. And it's, it's really awesome to see that even if they're, they have a lot of difficulties in life, they keep going and they keep trying and they they try everything to make their family, their community happy in there, and uh, they can survive anything. <laughs>